Hearing a little bit about it last week, and you know, wanted to see how we're going to set it up because right now we're taking payment for benches or trees from the donor, and then we either pay. There we go. All right. Going ready to go here. The uh, October 26th Parks and Rec Commission meeting is now in session. So um, let's start with roll call, I guess. And okay. Commissioner Christensen? Here. Commissioner Amarine? Here. Commissioner Snellman? Here. Commissioner Souter? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Chair Brandt? Here. Councilmember Polina? Here. Tim Moore, staff? Abby Whitman is here from planning and Sam Nelson is absent. Okay, thanks everyone. So the first order of business then tonight is open forum. If there's anyone online that would like to have a few words, uh, this is now the time to, to speak up. I'll give you a minute if you're muted. Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move to the approval of the August 24th, 2020 minutes. I wasn't at hand. the meeting, but I didn't have <laughs> questions on any of it. Do you have questions? I didn't have questions. On page three, there was just one, one spot on the um, well, it's one, two, three, four, five, about six down where we was talking with Chairman Brandt noted the trail connection segment and the last couple, the last in the last sentence, it, it reads, it will should suffice. Mm -hmm. And maybe strike one of those words, it will suffice or should, probably should. So strike will. I don't know. I don't see that in the paragraph. I think talking about. Uh, page three. Yeah. It is. One, two, five. three, four, five down. It starts with Chairman Brandt noted the trail connection segment. Yeah. So in the last sentence, this is as long as there is a surface right now that works, it and there's two words there. Oh, it will should. It I, should. I would strike will and leave it as should. Okay. That's nice. I missed that one. <laughs> Then I wasn't sure if it captured Commissioner Christensen's comments on the um, the sidewalk is not the problem. The I mean, the, I think you were getting to the point that the trail would be a better connection there than the sidewalk. Yes, that's what I meant. Was that oh the paragraph two up from there? Two up from there. Yeah, so I'm not yeah. sure. Which pair? Help me with what paragraph you're on. on. On page three. Yeah, on, on page three, but. One, two, three, four, five, fifth paragraph down. One, two, three, four, That's five. That's what you're talking about, right, Dave? Yep. Where it says Commissioner Christensen? Yes. Okay. So there's nothing grammatically wrong with it, although I, I don't think it captured what he was talking about on the, the sidewalk versus the paved aspect. Okay, once someone crosses, there's no way to get out. Yeah, and I'm not sure how I, want, I would want to revert it. Um, yeah, to get out to the trail. We could strike the whole, we could strike the whole paragraph. No, I don't think we should do that. You were trying to make a point, yeah. Well, what does something somebody like uh, was it, it was, wasn't the original question weren't we questioning whether there was a sidewalk or or nothing there right scott was kind of questioned what oh he thought there was nothing there's a I sidewalk there was nothing. there's a sidewalk on both sides yeah. yeah right now so there's a sidewalk on the dunn brothers side and there's a sidewalk on the you know what oh, down, down there eye doctor yeah. side eye doctor side yeah, yeah. So on the Cub, to get to Cub from Stillwater Boulevard? Yeah. 
So it'd be on the south side of Curve Crest Boulevard. There is a sidewalk that connects from the trail to Hub yeah. Foods. Yeah. But it's a five foot five foot mm -hmm. sidewalk, just like the one on the other side. I was questioning that because I didn't realize there was a, a sidewalk. Side yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of those that I hardly see anybody use. You're right. So that that's why I've kind of pushed off the forty five thousand for extending the trail there. Um, but that I think it, it it captures what the discussion was. I don't know. I don't think we need to belay that anymore. And just as a clarification, we did end up keeping trail improvements in for forty five thousand for next year. What about is is the trail along? And we're getting off of this. But, yeah, but maybe I can bring that up later and when we talk about the budget. Um, as far as meeting minute changes or modifications, anyone else? Entertain a motion to approve them. I'll make a motion to approve. This is Commissioner Suter. I'll second. Snellman. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, I should just say any opposed in the case of that. But. <laughs> All right. After that, we've got new business planning commission items. And Ed, does Abby want to take it away or do you? Okay, we'll, see. we'll hand it over to Abby now. Thank you. Um, chair and commissioners, I'm going to screen share here. We've received a development plan a preliminary plat for a new residential subdivision to be known as White Pine Ridge and be located directly across. Uh, it's at 12950 um, 75th Street North, directly across from where Northland spits out. So here's our new fire station, the Mary Knoll, you can kind of see. Currently, um, it's actually a portion of this 12, 960, but all of the 12, 950 would contain the single family residence and then have 13 new single family residential lots. Give me a second. Yeah. Could I ask a clarification as to where this is? I can't picture. Across the street from the tennis courts. Northland yep. Park. North of North Northland Park. Park. North of Northland Park, yep. West of the new fire station. This is Northland Park. Here's the new fire station. This is the uh, Lakes of Stillwater development, the Minar neighborhood. We've got Boutwell to the north, 75th Street or County Road 12, whichever you prefer to call it. Northland Avenue ex exits okay. Northland's right there at the tennis courts. Yep. But is it Northland? So, okay, up there someplace. That's fine then. I just, yeah. Sure. So uh, Northland would be proposed to be extended into a cul-de-sac. Um, a portion of the Northland right away would be on that adjacent property, but that is all that's being platted on that adjacent property at this time to access those 13 units. We do have a concept plan that does show then the development of the neighboring properties to the north, um, but it wouldn't be a part of this development. Each of these properties are developing separately. It Per, you know, each of those um, creating their own unique challenges. Um, so the uh, right away would extend up. No sidewalk or trails or parks are being proposed with this development. The park and trail plan, excuse me, the park and open space plan does not call for any park or open space in this area. So again, just directly across from Northland. Um, this area isn't uh, slated for any sort of neighborhood parks. Um, however, we did slate for some sort of trail, future trail to expand or ex extend from that Northland Avenue. So right now on the south side of County Road 12, there is an off street trail. Our plans do call for an, another off street trail on the north side and then this extension of Northland. One of the tricky parts in kind of regional planning in this area, and forgive me for bouncing around here, but with all of these properties under private 
um, ownership, individual separate ownership, getting a trail from this point on 12 to somewhere along here on Boutwell is challenging. Mm -hmm. So Westridge came in, we called for an on, excuse me, an off street, a sidewalk to extend through to this neighborhood. What we would like to extend that right of way through there. However, we're kind of kicking the can of the development of the potential trail or sidewalk. We'd want that on that east side to kind of go up to the north. So we're staff is actually recommending that we wait on any sort of a trail easement until that 12960 develops the neighboring property to the east. Um, we are also, though, recommending um, that a trail easement be obtained on the south side of this first lot here. And again, that would be so that we could obtain potentially someday or develop someday potentially trail on the north side of 12 in this location. So just to summarize, um, we're recommending a trail easement on the south side of the property. We'd wait for that kind of northerly connection until we kind of get into this 12, 960 or adjacent properties that it might work north. And then also recommending um, fee in lieu of land dedication for both park and trail. Does anyone have any questions for me? Just my, my comment from when the first parcels came up and were developed and split up like that. and and. We, we knew at that time that they're all individual properties and uh, because we didn't have a plan for parks or trails and in those, in those, well, trails we have the concept, but um, it is it would be very difficult to try to create a cohesive neighborhood out of all the patchwork of different developments there. So uh, mm -hmm. I feel we are, our hands are kind of tied there as far as um, providing any amenities for the neighborhood because it really is going to be a bunch of puzzle pieces that are put together. Mm -hmm. um, so the best we can do is trail events. And I, I certainly agree with that in that area, um, especially you know, like at the base of the hill before you head up. Uh, it's kind of right where that, that is across from Northland and, and also having that possibility of a future trail to connect up to the, like the armory along the north side because that is a busy road, high speed limits on there. Right. So let's get some comments. Abby, isn't the county putting a halt to that access on County Road 12 right now? And it told me we'll not allow there is access. access. There is access there and the county had um, built in turn lanes at the Northland for with the anticipation for this point. This is the only other point on County Road 12 that the county is going to allow for an access. So we're working through just logistics with the county in terms of um, that regional development through there. How are those other roads going to connect up for some sort of north-south access from Northland to Boutwell? Um, the city is in a position where when we built Mary Knoll, Mary Knoll is really serves as that point of that north south between the two, especially with the controlled access there. So we do have a meeting with the county to talk with them about just how we get through there. Um, there's some pretty significant um, constraints if you don't mind me sharing one more time. These properties through here have three different um, kind of landlocked wetlands that really propose challenges for getting through this area in here. Um, we looked at a north-south connection through this development, which I think the county would prefer, um, but because of the shoreline impacts to the tributary from Browns Creek and the wetlands on the adjacent properties, it really limits the development of how you can get on onto this property and develop it. So um, that north-south connection through here, well, it could occur. We believe it could also occur elsewhere on, on that regional system. So kind of helps slow down that traffic some. Um, a long time ago, there was a discussion about connecting Northland up with Neal. And I think um, if you live in the Neal neighborhood, you know that that can get to be a lot of um, through traffic that is at a, a faster speed. And so we kind of want to slow down the traffic through this neighborhood. I have a comment. 
First, I, I think it'd be great to have Northland Park as a trailhead. Um, do you have any idea of when that's slated for, Abby? No, I don't. Um, Tim and I haven't necessarily talked about just trailhead development in a long while, but it is listed on the comprehensive plan as a trailhead. All right. Then my second question, just in reading over your um, summary, is it typical that the it looks like the current house that's there, it's going to stay, that they're not going to pay the park trail fee? Is that typical that an existing house doesn't pay? Yeah, the provision for us to be able to collect fee in lieu of the actual dedication is that it would it's assessed to new um, okay. units. So the idea being the fees would be applicable to any of the future lots so that we could service those future residents. Okay. Good. I that too. Hmm. Other comments? Did you know in talking to the county, do they think it'll be a controlled intersection there or just access with turning lanes? I think it access with turning lanes is okay. what it will be. Um, I think that there's too close of a distance to the Mary Knoll um, access point to have those two lights in that yeah. location. Um, so I think it really is just that kind of turn lane access in and out. And we are we're, we are confident we can get through and around all these water resources other than through this property. It's just showing it, I think, to all the parties involved and kind of all of us having an agreement regarding that. Okay. Neighborhood. Yep. I guess hearing no no more uh, no no more discussion here. Um, so I will I'll move that we take the recommendation that um, we obtain trail easement to the south side of lot one in dedication of thirty two thousand five hundred in park and dead trail dedication fees. Mm -hmm. I capture it then. You need a second, Dave. Yes, we, we need a, we need I'll, a second. I'll, so. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> yeah, the all right. It. <laughs> so, all right. So we've had a first and a second. Are, any further discussion on this? No. Okay, hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Roll call. We have to do it on all these. Yeah. Commissioner Christensen. Yes. Commissioner Amrine. Yes. Commissioner Snellman? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Chair Brandt? Yes. Great. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Abby. Okay, uh, we are moving on to uh, informational items. Capital outlay for 2021, just an update. If you recall, at our June and August meetings, we uh, talked about the five-year plan and the and year 2021 was included in that. Um, it then went to finance and administration for their review. And if you remember, they came back in August uh, wanting us to cut the budget from roughly 626 down to 400,000, which we did. And then a little bit later, it came back instead of 400,000, uh, we would get 500,000 in the cap, Cook Parks capital outlay for. 2021. Part of that is moving um, the hard court resurfacing pickleball at Northland that we had scheduled for this year, next year over to our general obligation bonds. 
Um, we're also hoping to get $15,000 in funding for the sunken gardens down on second across from the lowland. So that came to about 150 off of that 500,000 left us 350. So what we ended up doing is adding back in the Palmer parking lot. Um, we still cut out irrigation for parks next year. Uh, we also took out extending the water main at Northland. That would help us with flooding the rinks. And then we still cut our playground um, from 120,000 next year to 60,000. And that got us to 400,000. So a little bit of good news, we got a little bit more money to expand. Okay. Um, I have a question on something you, you mentioned that little that little area across from the Lowell Inn. Yep. It's kind of sunken down in there. Yep. Um, somebody help me. I've never seen anybody down in there. And what is it? Has it been there for a long time? Yeah. Yeah, it's been there for years. Um, there's a volunteer group that maintains the garden down there. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And with GX events there, I think they have more weddings and stuff like that there. It is. Take pictures in there. Yeah. And a little fountain oh. down there, the water comes out. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, comes some benches. It's a, it's kind of like, it's a little oasis in, in, in the built up area. I mean, it's just a tiny little thing, but it's, you walk in there, it's like a grotto. Um, right. It is a grotto. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I was gonna say, Linda, I was part of the garden club that maintained that. Um, I was in a garden club for 10 years. Mm. And it's just one of the areas that garden clubs adopt. And I must say, we took great pride in that rock garden. We called it a rock garden. Um, it's really a fabulous gym that most people are unaware of, but I think people that walk by go down there and I'm sure there's a history to it, how it came to be and um, how it got started. It'd be interesting to know, but it's okay. well made. Yeah, it's nice. Kim, the 60,000 for playgrounds, how is that gonna be determined or allocated? Well, I think our number one need because of use is Northland Park. Okay. So we're planning on combining two to five and five to 12, putting it down below and having ADA access to that playground because that's something that we uh, have to include in our improvements going forward here now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other comments on that? The big thing we, we worked on putting together the budget is preparing for next year. Yeah. Who knows what's gonna happen with the legislature and the, um, local unit government aids and things like that. So we, we did not bond this year, so we'd have money for next year and to make sure we're, we're prepared. Mm -hmm. I have a general question. Is there any status on the curling club? Have they made any progress in their funding? Or where's that? Absolutely, status? yes. Um, I just met with them on last week, actually. Um, they're going to make a proposal to the city council to do a feasibility study, or not a feasibility study, but a, a, a study on what's possible. Uh, the, the costs are so astronomical about that connection to the ice arena. Mm -hmm. So we want, they want to have an architect look at it and say, well, this is what we can do, this is what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And uh, try to make it more cost effective, but they're, they're very confident they can go out and raise the money. Good, good, yeah, interesting. All right. Any other budget related comments? Uh, so my question on the trail uh, along Stillwater Boulevard is it's in pretty rough shape, but that's along along mm -hmm. County Road. Yep. So is that county responsibility for maintenance or? That is city responsibility. I met with a contractor. We're looking at some different type of surfacing on that, different types. Yeah. Um, 
we should have about twenty thousand dollars in trail maintenance funds for next year also and we had planned on using it for that okay actually we had a presentation at last week's council meeting on, on uh on the pavement management system on how they rate all the roads and how they do all that on all the system. They don't do any work on really the bike trails by prioritization of work. It'll, the trail out in uh, Legend, Liberty's not too bad, but the one on Legends needs a lot of work. And they're very heavily used. Yep. And we need to start uh, putting together a plan to maintain those. Sean actually said that was the county's responsibility to fix that trail up. I didn't think I, it was. I didn't yeah. think it was, but Sean thought it was. I'll so. clarify that, but I believe it's because yeah. I thought that was a really that yeah. that trail is horrible. It's, it's getting really bad. Really and bad. We, yeah, yeah, and we did seal coat that about five years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, they are putting together a bike trail plan for the whole community, a maintenance plan for the whole community. Good. And we take care of all these trails. We do all these trails and then don't maintain them. Mm -hmm. so. yep. Well, that's the, every trail we bring on, then that's something that needs to get on the calendar for me. Right. And, yeah. Good. It's good to hear. So, so the that GIS guy. It's guy already been looked at. at. <laughs> okay. Uh, other next item. Okay. Benches, trees, memorial items. Uh, the city's always had a memorial bench and actually uh, beaver brick up at Pioneer Park. Uh, from time to time, we've, we've had people donate trees in memory of somebody and we've done that. Um, we've seen an increased request for that this year. So I along with staff have gone through and identified more locations that we can put benches at Pioneer Park, Low Park, some along the trail, downtown. And uh, in your packet tonight, we have a few examples from some other communities. Um, Edina, mm -hmm. St. Louis Park, St. Paul, their program. So we're looking at expanding that and coming up with a form that people would fill out. Um, we do have, you know, of course, a good idea what benches cost, what paper bricks cost. Trees, depending on the area, the park, size, you know, they vary. And then we could, you know, look at expanding that and into some other gifts. If need be, we can, or, you know, in the future here, I've been talking with our finance director on how we would handle that. So, um, Tim, could you explain to me, all right, if somebody wants to um, uh, have a, a tree uh -huh. in somebody's memory or, or whatever, yeah. is there a plaque that goes by that tree? We do not have a plaque program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was. There are a couple of trees, one up at Pioneer, one down at Lowell that do have plaques. Um, I think, you know, there's there's three options that cities use a plaque. Some put just a little tag on the tree, and then they have a certificate program, which, you know, memorializes that tree with a certificate. So we'll look at that. I like the certificate idea. I was just wondering if I would hate to see that something gets hammered into the tree just to show that, you know, so-and-so dedicates it, this tree to their mother or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I would hate to see the tree damaged in any way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's right. difficult to hit with if you've got a, something in the ground for a plaque, then that's something else that you've got to mow around. And right. To, uh, you got to maintain it. Mm. It could be vandalized. Yeah. yeah. Correct. We had a light I, program out the county. We didn't. We didn't put plaques. Yeah. Uh, we didn't want to make it look like a graveyard in all our parks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we gave the recipient of the tree or the person of the family that they, I don't know. Tim died and, and we wanted to give his wife a memorial. We gave her a certificate that we planted a tree in her memory. Yeah. And then uh, we kept a log in the office that a tree was dedicated in Tim's memory to the parks by Polina family or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did at the county. And, and we had 
thousands of dollars donated that way. It's, you know, we it's only like charge 15. We were doing, we, we had a- We had two different levels. We had a fund. It was $15 that went into the fund because you can get bare root trees so cheap. But that fund, that fund kept building up really fast. I mean, if you want to, instead of giving flowers, you go give a tree right. and give a certificate. So it worked out really well. But if you wanted to donate a tree for 150 bucks or $200, we would, we would allow you to go plant the tree as a family for that kind of money. And then pick out a, we'd help you pick out a location and a tree, dig the hole for you. And you'd come out as a family to plant the tree. So it was a very nice deal. And we, we got thousands of dollars on it, thousands. So it'd be a good way to get our trees back into the parks. Yeah. Mm. I, I would like to comment. Um, I think this is a great idea, Tim. I mean, benches and trees, I think it, it could be well promoted and well liked. When I look through the different forms, I like the one from the city of Edina first because it's the shortest. Yep. Um, I like the idea that a person could select their park, something beyond Pioneer and Lowell Park, even though I really understand it's based upon the need of that park. But I like the idea of a person could select maybe their neighborhood park versus just downtown. I also thought the uh, Adina form was nice that you could write out your inscription. Um, one big difference is for Adina, their trees are $350 while the St. Paul trees are $600. Um, yet they're the same size. I thought that was an interesting discrepancy. Uh, I also like the idea on, on the one where it said the donor could help water the tree. Now, yes. you know, through those water bags, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but at least for that first year, they feel like they're taking care of their tree. I certainly support no plaques. Um, I think they're prone to vandalism. I think their certificate, just working with the family, but I, I think this will be a great program. People will take to it for a bench or a living tree. I gotta admit that price discrepancy between St. Paul and Edina kind of stuck out, but otherwise uh, I think we could customize something for Stillwater and our parks. Mm -hmm. That would be good. That's my two cents. I agree. And I, I like the one too on this um, St. The St. Paul one where they gave examples of plaque names to be dedicated, but uh, you guys can figure that out. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. It could be front and center on our city webpage, website, you know, donate a bench, a tree, work with the city on where to put it. I like Mike's idea to the family planting and um, yeah, as far as where to locate the trees, um, there's a couple of ways, it's something just came to mind. So we have areas in parks that we're looking to get trees, to plant trees, that I mean, we could identify basically that yep. if you would like to, we have these spots, we would like to have trees, but we don't have those in the budget and may have something available that way. But also if people want to have a memorial tree, they can work with it. There, there, we must have some idea where we need trees. Oh yeah, we do. Oh, and, that. and that's you know. kind of like what Pam has been talking about. We have planted trees in other parks other than Lowell and Pioneer. We just put one in last week up at uh, Washington Square. Last year, we actually planted one down by Brewer's Pond off of uh, Nightingale. Oh where a family always, when they lived there, always went back and played around back there. So they donated one for their mother, a maple tree back there. So we do have them scattered around town. Yeah, I think it's, it's a great, location. it'll be a great program. It's gonna be good. Tim, who decides what type of tree it is? You know, we kind of, um, I remember we had a forester here at one point in time. I don't know if she's- We do now. Staff. We have a forester now. He's a, yeah. actually full-time staff member. Yep, full-time full -time staff member in engineering. He'll work with us on that. And then, you know, we have staff in the parks department that's pretty knowledgeable in horticulture too. So mm -hmm. we help guide them towards what tree is the best for the situation. Good. Okay. So as the map guy, We've done tree inventories in the county, all the county parks areas we've mapped out. So we know yep. how many ash trees we've got where and 
And is there anything like that at the city? Are you doing any type we, of? We did do a tree survey last, last summer. Year. Last okay. summer we updated, we did one probably 10 years ago yeah. mm -hmm. and, and we updated last year. So we do have um, a count of type size condition on all city property except for Browns Creek Park Reserve. Yeah. Um, right of ways included buildings, Excellent. all of our trees. Sounds great to hear. We think uh, we have about 3,500 or 5,000 trees total. Wow. Very cool. We need to replace a few trees down there along the trail. Yeah. The red buds and that. Yeah. We did replace two or three this earlier this fall. All right. So as staff will keep working on that and I'll bring back some updates. Sounds very good. And Eric, I just had a thought um, because we've been criticized before about, um, and I think this was along in Pioneer Park maybe, of doing something but not letting people that, um, you know, play and, and sit at that park um, to have any input because they didn't know something was going to happen. So I'm just thinking if there's a way that if you think, okay, we want to put, you know, 10 trees up here in this area, somehow have a, uh, a notice just to people that live around there or um, play up at that area can be notified ahead of time that something's going to happen. Because I, I do recall that some people were, you know, why why didn't we know about this? We would have liked to have had put some input into it. And that was more about Pioneer Park, I think. Mm -hmm. So so people feel a little included, you know. Yeah. You know, they always play up there with their kids or whatever. And yeah, so they can have some input if they'd like. Yeah. Any other comments on that? The I did get a comment yesterday. I got an e a letter from a lady that uh, was very complimentary to staff uh, that helped her locate a bench at Pioneer Park. Mm -hmm. And she thought it was great that our staff would actually talk to her about it uh, and work with her on putting a bench up there in memory of her husband that passed away. So she was very thankful that uh, all, all staff, I mean, she said the maintenance guys even came up and thought that she had the best place in the park. So, <laughs> and she was very excited. So <clears throat> you like getting notes like that. Yeah. Yeah. We have other updates? Uh, no other updates for me. We are trying to figure out some things downtown about making our community more. Uh, I shouldn't say marketable in the winter, but trying to bring people into Stillwater. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on some things of lighting, like our pedestrian plaza. Uh, the Christmas tree will be coming back again. We started working on the Christmas tree. I've been working on trying to take the, uh, the Chestnut Street Plaza and making that a, I'm calling it a winter wonderland. Mm -hmm. uh, put some Christmas trees on the plaza area, lighting it up, trying to decorate the poles in there, decorate the poles along the waterfront. Uh, we're looking at maybe getting some of those commuter, computerized Christmas trees so you can put music out there and the trees will blink and stuff. Do something pretty interesting. So, um, what's the status on the ice castle? Uh, it's, I've not it's heard not, anything. It's, it is not coming back to Minnesota this year. They they announced uh, the news that it, it was going to go back to Excelsior or something like that, or or to uh, uh, or. St. Anthony. St. Anthony. Yeah. yeah, it was so they they are not going to do as many this year around the country. So they cut the Minnesota one. Mm -hmm. Just so that like yesterday, the day before. I had somebody ask if um we've considered snow carving or ice sculptures. Oh, uh, that's one of the things we're looking at on that plaza area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we, mm -hmm. there's talk of maybe doing like a luge type of thing. Um I've asked the county to close down. Chestnut Street on the west side of Main Street, up along Ziggy's up to, what was it, Union Alley? Yep. Uh, keeping that closed and maybe doing some sculptures in there, 
some Christmas trees, some lights to light the, the up, something that brings people down from all around maybe shop downtown. I've been told that the businesses are really hurting downtown. Mm -hmm. So, so sculptures, we have a look at the ice sculptures. Another thing I'm working on is trying to bring a uh, fat tire bike rally to Stillwater. I've been working with Sustainable Stillwater and uh, some other groups. I uh, got it cleared with Wisconsin on their trail over there. Uh, MnDOT has given us approval to go across the two bridges. Um, we have a loop. We work with Oak Park Heights, so we go across the bridge, go around the loop, go up to uh, what's the mountain bike park over there? Valley View. Yeah, Valley View. Is it Valley View? Yep. In the Valley View Park, and then back, and then come down through Stillwater. Uh, that's something we're looking at, trying to bring people in. That would be good. I Another think thing we're looking at was um, is. I don't know how this all the stuff's going to come together with all the governors uh, programs and stuff about groups of people. Um, we're looking at trying to get skating rinks on Lily Lake and have like the Stillwater pond hockey classics out there for youth instead of adults. So if you look at those other other communities or where they have them in Lake Phelan and Minnetonka, it's all adults. There's nothing like that for kids, and I think getting kids outside, yeah. uh, recreating outside, and it gives the grandparents an opportunity. Like they can't go into this arenas or stadiums and watch their grandkids, but you can be outside. So right. that's something we're looking at, we're evaluating. There's a there's some people in, from Stillwater that have these uh, portable rinks, mm -hmm. and we put like a pinwheel out on the lake and make a big uh, fire ring in the middle to try to make it more attractive for people downtown hmm. or up up in Stillwater, bring people to Stillwater. Hmm. And then there's there's talk of trying to bring a rink downtown too. Hmm. I don't know how popular that would be, but um, th there's there's talk of trying to do that too. Didn't so there that, used to be outdoor kids tournament at the dome and that outside rink or does that not I have not heard anything from them this year. That was a Mike tournament. I don't think Sticks they're doing it anymore. Water. It was, yeah. yeah, that was part of the Herb Brooks Foundation, and I haven't heard anything about it. Okay. I heard, uh, <clears throat> sorry, they're talking about rumors. I heard Wisconsin's going to leave the section of the trail open but not do anything with it. That's exactly right. So we're not going to do anything with their trail? I'm just asking. With Wisconsin's? No. We, we've talked about that actually. I, nothing's happened with it yet, but Wisconsin is not going to plow their side of the trail. They don't want the liability of going up that hill on the ice. So how, how could you have a... Uh, you leave the snow on and the mom, those snow bikes, those fat, fat tire bikes go right through the snow. Even if it's like 18 inches of snow? Yep. You, you, know, you pack it down and then it'll go right up the hill. What do you mean you pack it down? You just run a groomer over just to smooth it out. So we would work on it over there? Possibly. Actually, I would, actually, the next call, I have to call Wisconsin yet. To, they have a big trail group over there, huge trail group on uh, biking, probably more than yeah. around here. And they were, they've were they been like working with us. So if we can do the fat tire bike thing, that's something we're just, mm -hmm. it just started last Thursday, so. I think it would be successful. Fat tire biking is in. Getting huge, getting it's huge. Big. It's very yeah. big. And the bike MN work, is that anything going on with that? We're working on making Stillwater Sustainable Bicycle City right now. I actually have to make a phone call tonight. Okay. So Sustainable Stillwater is working. Uh, I've been helping them trying to make Stillwater a bike, bicycle friendly community. Mm -hmm. And then I've been working with the CVB and the chamber about making bike friendly businesses in Stillwater. So if you, and I know they've been working with Sean on bike parking downtown, different ideas where you put bike racks to encourage people to come down, ride your bike down there, go shopping, whatever, and try to help mm -hmm. encourage that downtown. So that's that's happening too. Yeah, that's great that um, spring is gonna come pretty soon and people yeah. wanna be out on their bikes. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff happening downtown right now. 
So anything that goes on in the parks, is that going to come back here for a review? The mountain biking, I think, uh, the bike, fat tire bike thing, I I think it's a trail thing, but I think it, we have to put an application through and stuff. Sure. You know, I, I don't have an answer, or, it, but I've been thinking if there's, um, if there could be some kind of a certificate or a card or something like that, that maybe um, a business downtown would be able to give to a bicyclist or something like this to encourage bicyclists to come down, whether the bicyclist then could maybe get a, you know, 15% off on, you know, a, a sandwich they bought or a, or something they bought at the co-op or something like that. So to encourage them to come down with an incentive of, you know, some kind of a deal on either food or or other items that they might want to purchase. To encourage people to ride the bikes down. Yeah. And our bicycles as a well. whole. Yeah. When I yeah, I've run into people on the trail that didn't know the area at all. So they they didn't even know Browns Creek was trail was there. A bike guide and stuff. And yeah, it just yeah, it was just something mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Actually, be going to the convention, visit real brochure. There's a whole thing on bicycle yeah. in St. Croix Valley. Yeah, it's got a lot of good stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of people that just show up, see it. and they didn't even see the sign for for the loop trail. They didn't. They rented e-bikes, and they didn't know where they're going, and they just asked. Really? Well, is there anything besides this hill? I said, yeah, yeah, there is. So, yeah. So I don't know. There, there are. There, I know there's a number of people that. I like to work as an ambassador for the trails and the city and just to point out. Well, the other thing is, uh, if did everybody get the last community still on our newsletter? Mm -hmm. One of the focuses now is to try to get education on etiquette, trail yeah. etiquette on, uh, on, on the trails. Yeah. So that was yeah. part of the new, last newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Yeah. So Sam Stillwater is doing a nice job putting this bike friendly community thing together. And that's a big thing is, is education. It's good to hear. I think I've said this in years past, but I used to do um, some bike riding for the MS, Multiple Sclerosis Society. Mm -hmm. And um, they had a, a, a very good film that emphasized um, courtesy of, with biking and yeah. you know getting getting people to say on your left yeah um and it's it's really hard even on the trail up near uh okay like um the ipo par property is that what i want to say yeah you know if you're just walking on the trail and suddenly a, a bike is by you mm -hmm. they haven't let you know that they're not there. so yeah right and it's yeah well, the first step is just not calling it a bike trail. Right. That's the very first step. Yep. Right. Because if you name it a bike trail, then that assumes ownership. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's a good right. point. Maybe. Yeah. Just a trail. Okay. Yeah. Any last items? Um, just as your waste interest, there's uh, interviews on Thursday for the new police chief in Stillwater. Oh. Five finalists went from 25, 25 finalists down to nine finalists. Now it's down to five finalists. So there's Excellent. interviews all day Thursday, pretty much. And this is for what? Police chief. Oh, I didn't even know he we were Retired. changing. Oh, and who who is it now? John Ganaway. There is there's an acting one right now. Oh. Hmm. All right. Good luck with those. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I can second that. Anyone opposed to adjourning? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Stephanie, is there a new round of ship funding coming out? I think so. I don't know off the top of my head. There, I've been drowning in COVID lately, so I don't hear as much about 
ship, but um, I believe they, they I believe they will have some additional money. I don't know exactly how they're targeting it this time around. So okay, like we're signature done. I just saw with some of these trail things we need to get on on top of it early this year, and I thought I read somewhere in the newspaper there was another round of funding coming out through the county. So. Yeah, there. I know they submitted their application to the state. Um, Kim Ball, I think you have her info. She she would know kind of call, whether yeah. there's going to be yeah. some city funding coming. So, all right. Thank you. Yep. All right. Good meeting. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Hit the button.